So this moves on to the next question. What would be the most interesting event in the biopic? This was somewhat of a hard choice because there were a lot... On one hand, I, I think that I've lived a rather boring existence, more or less. So finding an interesting event would be kind of hard. And what I mean by a boring event is compared to the lives of a lot of friends of mine, a lot of people I know, they've lived more interesting lives. I've known people who, you know, they've had to deal with fights, they've had to, um, you know, fight off gangs, they've been around the world, they've been to other countries, they've um, gone through experiences which I wouldn't want to wish on my worst enemy. They've gone through some shit. Me, because I've lived in a fairly well-adjusted family and my parents aren't divorced, they cared about us, they tried to put us through you know, a decent education. I've never committed crimes, I haven't been in jail. I don't, and you know, and I've, despite my martial arts experience, I've probably only been in maybe four to maybe five fights at the most in my entire life. I, um, I haven't really been, I don't think I've lived that, ex, you know, interesting life. But then again, there have been things that I've gone through that some people would consider interesting, like the fact that I helped to organize rallies while I was in college, and one in particular I'll never forget because that's when I really got to see firsthand just how brutal the police and governments can get when they want to crack down on people's messages. This of course will refer to the student rally that happened on March 23rd, 1995, when they were trying to protest the budget cuts coming down for CUNY schools in New York City and the cops decided to break their own barricades to beat the shit out of the students there in front of City Hall. I was there, I saw it with my own eyes. Thankfully I was able to escape the paddy wagons, but that's a story for another time. I guess that would be an interesting event for the biopic. Or for those who want something more action oriented, maybe um, a more interesting time would be when I was training with my friend Ishmael, who I would have listed as under my best friends, but I have no idea where the hell Ishmael is these days. I've lost touch with him years ago. I have no idea what he's up to. I hope he's doing well. Last I heard he was in Texas somewhere. But he was the guy who really put, he was my first real martial arts instructor and he's the one who put my shit together. I honestly feel that if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have the aptitude for hand-to-hand -hand combat that I have now. Even though I've had other instructors since who've broadened my horizons on martial arts, but the guy who put my shit together was Ishmael, and I was under him for three years. Good, and I mean the funny thing is we were good friends in any other time but training time. And then when it was training time, he just you know kicked my fucking ass, and then after that, back to just talking about shit and philosophy and all that. But yeah, I guess that would be an interesting time for the biopic. Plus people would get to see fists and feet flying around, so they'd probably find that a bit more um, entertaining. Um, and then of course, but what I think would probably be the most interesting is I guess the time that me and my wife were homeless for about a month and a half. Yeah, that was an interesting fucking time. And it really was all, basically through like no real fault of our own. It was just circumstances that ended that basically got us living out of her car for a month and a half and yeah that was a rough time thanks to financial wrangling however I really knew what I was doing with the money you know we weren't destitute we were able to eat and every now and then we'd go to a hotel to wash up and stuff like that that, that was a crazy time but our biggest goal at the time was to make sure that we found a place to live and um, got jobs and everything and we were able to handle that after the month and a half we had jobs we already we found a place to live we we're paying rent and we were that's one of the reasons why you know, I'm still kind of proud of the fact that even though I'm struggling to keep it right now, we now have a house. We went from living in the car to now owning our own home. So but that's, yeah, that, that, that's a story for another time. I guess that would probably be the most interesting thing to pick for the way I think, I guess. So, yeah. Now here comes a really interesting question that I was asked. And it was, say a best friend of mine confides in me that they ran over a homeless person. And there's no evidence whatsoever on the car. No forensic evidence, no blood, no skin, no bits of clothing. There's no dent on the car. There's no scrapes, scratches, nothing. To sh so basically, that person can get away scot-free. There's nothing on the car to suggest that anything happened. And the friend 
doesn't want to report this to the cops. Would I report it to the cops, however? This, of course, was a tough question, not just because of the moral implications of turning in your best friend, but let's also get into the fact that there is no evidence whatsoever that this happened. I've seen many car accidents over the years. Even if you slightly tap someone, there's evidence. There's something. If there's absolutely nothing on the car, then there is a very good chance that my friend actually hallucinated this event. That it really didn't happen. I would be questioning them, were you fucking drunk driving at the time? Are you sure you hit something? Because if there is nothing on your car, I find this to be highly suspect. This would be an extreme weird freak accident. I myself have been in a couple of accidents, thankfully through no fault of my own. I knew what I was doing behind the wheel, but motherfuckers hit me or motherfuckers cut me off. And no matter how hard you try to avoid hitting something or, or, you know, or how little you hit something, something's going to show up on the car. Even the slightest scratch. So, for him to have run over somebody and there's nothing on the car at all, I really, really question if something happened. But if the guy is willing to insist that, no, damn it, I hit somebody. I know I hit them, but no, I am not going to tell the cops. I'd have a problem with my friend right off for the simple reason that, look, I would understand you don't want to face jail time. I know, especially in this country. You don't want to face jail time. But this was still a human life we're dealing with here, okay? Yes, he was homeless. Then again, how do you know the guy was homeless just because of the way he dressed? How do you know? Did you get out the car and talk to the guy as he lay dying in a puddle of blood? How did you know? <laughs> but let's just say for the sake of argument, he's homeless. It's still life. Yeah, he's living destitute. He has no home. He has no prospects, no job. The friends he would know if he did have friends are probably other vagrants, but it's still a human life. Somebody knew who he was. The guy deserves to not just simply be some unknown. There's probably somebody who's wondering, whatever happened to Uncle Jake? They need to know. They have, they have a right to understand what happened, even in this final miserable moments. They need to, you know, they deserve to know. So, if my friend is going to insist that this really happened despite the lack of evidence of this, which I know that would have to be some, I would report it. I would say that, look, you need, especially if my friend told me where this supposedly happened, then they're like, you need to go to this particular highway where this shit happened because there's a dead guy there who was hit by a car. But I would do this under the caveat that I myself would go out there to see if I could find any, like, you know, evidence that somebody got splattered there. Blood splatter, blood patterns, and, and you know, on the road. Would there be a body there? And if I saw it myself, then I would definitely call the cops over to it. And um, I would hope to at least get my friend to understand that, look, you took a life. At least, if it, plead manslaughter or something, and they might reduce the charge, but you took a life. And I know I'm making myself look flippant. I'm not being flippant about this. This is not as if I'm making this like an easy freaking answer. Like, yeah, you hit him, hell with it. You got to go to jail. Fuck it. Go to, go, go to the cops. No. I mean, it's not, it would not be easy for me, especially if my friend doesn't want to turn himself in, but... The fact is, it's, it was somebody. Just because he's homeless doesn't mean that he's not somebody. And the guy deserves some bit of respect. Some people need to know what happened to him. His family, if you can find out who his family is or his friends are, they need to know what happened to him. So that is ultimately what would make me choose to report this to the cops. On the condition that this actually freaking happened. Because, to be honest... If there's absolutely no evidence in the car, it's highly suspect that anything happened. I would actually have to, like, you know, go to the scene. Like, where did this fucking happen? I'm going out there and finding out my fucking self to see if there's a body there. We're going to see if you weren't drinking or something. You know, or imagine this. You know, you were high on mushrooms or some shit. So, yeah. There's that. That's question four. Now, question five was definitely a very interesting answer, but... In a weird sort of way, it wasn't as tough for me as the other questions. And the question was as follows. Um, and by the way, if you're wondering why I'm not splicing in go that phone, just answering the question himself, it's because 
if I download it, it's going to be as an FLV, and I edit this with Windows Movie Maker, which doesn't recognize that file, so I have to say the question if people are wondering why I'm doing it this way. Um, basically saying that, look, all life forms go extinct eventually, right? So how do I think the human race is going to go out, our species of humanity? It's inevitably going to go out. Human species go extinct. There's not. There's nothing we can do about it. What's going to take us out, though? Is it going to be by our own hand, you know, through pollution or war or our own stupidity, whatever, or is it just going to go through a, nat a natural evolutionary process where we just sooner or later become a different species and the older species dies out, much like other human species which has died out, because there have been other human species that have died out. And we almost went extinct at one point before we branched out to the rest of the world and basically, you know, ended up with, you know, an adaptive means of surviving on this planet. That's our strength. We're adaptable. So, what would take us out? I can go with a jokey answer, I guess. In fact, I'll partially go jokey and then I'll get serious. Jokey answer I would give to this if I was just going to, you know, troll and just be goofy is, well, we all know the robot apocalypse is coming. I know most people want to go with the zombie apocalypse, but really, there's more evidence, if you, if you can call it that, that we'd be taken out by, you know, an artificial intelligence than um, some type of weird mutated virus that would make us zombies. The robot apocalypse would happen first. We're already hyper-dependent on technology. We're already trying to find ways to come up with advanced AI. And with the irrational way we act and the, stu and the stupid ways we act, I can easily see, you know, an artificial intelligence sooner or later saying, well, humans are the problem. Fucking kill them. <laughs> so no consequence. The planet gets to survive. So, yeah, that would be my jokey answer. But if I was going to get serious... See, this is where it gets tricky because I think that if we do go out, it would probably be a mix of both circumstances. And this is what I mean. We see the destructive capabilities we have on being able to wipe ourselves out. But I think out of a sense of self-preservation, we haven't gone that far down the line yet. The problem is, because of certain self-destructive ideologies that we adhere to, that humanity has adhered to in one form or another, we could justify doing things that would sooner or later completely fuck us over. Right now, let's just take the whole, you know, natural resources debate thing that's going on right now, the environmentalist debate that's going on right now. You actually have people who are willing to argue against anyone who states that, look, we really should look at how we're using resources on this planet and its impact on the environment at large because it does have some harmful effects which could sooner or later fuck us over. In fact, in many ways it already is. And you'll have people going, I don't need some stupid government organization telling us what to do. Look, I'm not even talking government here. I'm just simply saying, look, maybe you should think about how you're using resources on this planet and the pollution and shit that you're doing. You're cutting into my profits and that's wrong. What the fuck? I mean, you got people that fucking stupid. They are that greedy to the point that they don't realize that they're fucking things over for other people. And they're that set against anything that would stop them from amassing even more wealth on top of the wealth they already have. Yeah, that's not a good thing. There, there is a weird sort of psychosis with that. Um, but on the other hand, Maybe we can even say that's a natural process, in a sense, that we're kind of going down that path. Remember our theories of entropy, that sooner or later, everything in nature is going to break down and head towards destruction. Maybe this is what we're seeing. Even though we haven't been on this planet that very long, this could just simply be our species' way of naturally walking towards, you know, entropy, uh, self-destructive end where you know we slowly phase ourselves out for another you know, and at the same time that we're phasing ourselves out a newer species a newer adaptive species would evolve from us that would deal with the aftermath that's possible if we look at our modern societies we see that there is more of a more of an emphasis on the cerebral or the academic 
or the intellectual rather than on the more physical um, actions and the more physical roles that you had to play in earlier times, and I say physical for lack of a better term. Um, you know, you look at older civilizations, and there were clearer roles that males and females had to play which owed up more to their physical abilities rather than their mental ones. Men were the protectors, the warriors, um, they had to play more aggressive roles and this is why the alpha males or the strong ones or the aggressive ones were more valued. You look at some of the myths that, or stories that were told of heroes back then, very few of them are guys who think, you know, with their wits. I mean, we do have stories of that, but it's more of the guy who's strong with a warrior who can take on 10,000 demons with one sword. You know, it's all this stuff about, you know, the strong physical um, type of dude. And females, of course, are limited to their physical roles, you know, in terms of since physically they are the ones who bear children. They're the ones who take care of the kids. They're the ones who take care of the home. And we know all the um, type of stuff that, you know, later evolved from that. But now we're, we seem to be at a, a crossroads because now that we're living in a time period where these, the lines are being blurred on these types of roles and the more physical aspects of our nature are being downplayed where when, and we're now living in a society where it's your intellectual side which is being treasured more. That's what elevates you more in societies these days. At least in certain aspects. I mean, we still have, you know, strength worship in the shape of athleticism and, you know, the um, deification of the military in this country. But by and large, you know, as you look at the advancements of society, um, there is a bit more of a stronger push for the intellectual, for, you know, the person who's willing to think, to dream, um, the person who's willing to advance human knowledge. And that's creating a world where the older traditions or the older values are not exactly um, working anymore. They don't exactly work in that sphere. And we're already seeing the struggle going on with that because there are plenty of people in the world today who still adhere to that and they're trying to find their place in this one. And this is where I go into what I'm talking about, like the human's ability to adapt to their environment. Um, as if this is a constant, we don't really know for sure, but if this is a constant and things are going to be lending more towards the cerebral, then I, who knows, um, the human beings could slowly but surely start developing more, you know, to be more adaptive and more suited for a society where that um, is our strength. That's, you know, that's what we're geared more towards and the more physical sides of ourselves start to atrophy. Um, maybe, I mean, and, and this part, I, I'm not going to even say it has any real scientific bearing because I could be dead wrong about this, but um, maybe that's what we're seeing with the whole so-called obesity epidemic, um, epidemic going on, or, you know, the fact that more and more people seem to be living sedentary lifestyles where they're not, um, as active as they used to be. They're not as physical as they used to be, you know. Most of the time we just sit around and watch TV and even when we go to work, the work is more mentally related you know, and stimulated than um, physically. I mean, we still have, you know, physical jobs, you know, steel working, factory working and all that, but more and more of that is being automated. And more and more people when they go to the workforce, it's sitting down in front of a computer or sitting down and sorting papers. Um, even if you are the type who's going to be, let's say you're working in retail, the physical work you're doing there doesn't exactly measure up to the type of physical work that we used to do or the type of stuff you would see more physically extensive stuff like, you know, factory working and all that. And more and more of the stuff is being automated, so that's, you know, this, the, the, the physical aspects of ourselves are being phased out. Even in warfare, certain physical things that we needed to do, we don't necessarily need to do anymore. You still need to be physically fit to be in the military, don't get me wrong. The type of stuff that they, you know, they do to train them in boot camp is the type of stuff that the average citizen would not be able to handle for a while until they were built up and, you know, trained up to do it. But, having said that, we don't really rely much on melee combat anymore for modern warfare. Now we're de um, depending on long-range weapons such as guns and cannons and mortars, and now we're using airplanes, and now we're even using drones to go into, um, to do our fighting for us. So even that is changing the scope of how we use our physical selves, and I think that's going to have an impact on our slow but inevitable evolution. Um, and that in itself could be a, a way of phasing out a certain aspect of Homo sapiens sapiens. So with 
all that um, said, and keep in mind that this right now is just speculation on my part, okay? I'm just speculating here. Um, this is just my opinion. When you couple that with the fact that you still have a whole lot of crazy yahoos who could wipe, you know, us out with many different we means, and I'm not just talking about like the simple act of nuclear war, but also through environmental poisoning, those two mixed together would have, will I think have a serious impact on how humanity develops down the line. I don't know if I could chalk it up to one thing or another, whether it's going to be natural evolution or our own actions. I'm honestly thinking it's going to be a mix of both. Both those things are going to come into play in how we develop way later on, you know, thousands or millions of years later on, how we develop as a species. And if we, if humanity is then favoring another species by then, if there's, you know, newer traits that, you know, favor one aspect of our, you know, of our natures over another. By the way, this is a bit of a tangent, but it's something that I guess in light of talking about our cerebral natures and, you know, the fact that we're moving, you know, technology is taking over more and more of our physical activities. This has me thinking a little bit about a uh, common trope you see in certain fantasy stories or video games where you live in a world that's fairly primitive-ish or middle age -ish, where you've know, got a mix of magic and sword and sorcery and stuff, but they always talk about an advanced civilization that came before where they were everybody knew a hell of a lot more and there was all this great technology or this great magic and somehow they lost it all and nobody knows how to do it anymore. Well, I'm not saying that that sort of thing is real, but it's kind of interesting to me that that sort of thing could happen. If you consider the fact that these days most of our information now is being stored digitally, we're moving away from analog ways of writing things, you know, like books are now being turned into e-books, um, our music now we're, we're preferring to listen to it digitally rather than listening to it to a cassette or, you know, even on a CD anymore, now it's all gotta be, you know, just, you know, all in solid state media. Um, we're now downloading our video games, we're downloading our TV and media, we're, I mean, everything is now being digitally stored in just a bunch of zeros and ones. You ever think about what, and another, another thing is, our technology is constantly advancing at a rapid rate, where old technology is not only no longer being used, but if you do um, find old media, you can't even use it with your new shit. Who has a Betamax anymore? Very, I mean, if you're poor, you probably still have a VCR, but if you're not, you most likely got rid of that shit already. So you got a whole bunch of tapes which can't be accessed. Um, think about what's happened to technology that didn't make it, like HD, uh, HD DVD, which was trying to fight that war with Blu-ray. Who has an HD DVD DVD player anymore? Or HD DVD, you know what I mean? Who got those freaking players anymore? <laughs> that was a tongue twister. Um, Think of old software that is no longer being used. Any of you guys still using real audio? Any of you guys even remember that stuff? Real media, those files? Remember what QuickTime used to be like? How crappy that software used to be? Um, remember, I mean, there's old formats that we no longer use. There's old technology that we no longer use and is incompatible with any of our new shit. If you want to access it, you got to have old stuff. Ask anybody who tries to play a DOS-based game. They have to have what they call their DOS box sitting on the side, an old computer made in the old style, like an old 386 or 486, to play those games. Because nowadays our newer computers usually can't handle it unless you're running an emulator. So we're phasing things out all the time. It's that, and that's old information, old media, lost to time. And what's going to happen if, let's say, there was a crisis that happened and electricity suddenly got conked out? <laughs> I know that's far-fetched, but just imagine if somehow through a major war or, you know, some major crisis, electricity gets phased out somehow, people forget how to keep the generators running or too many generators blow up. We go through a major crisis where now we're scavenging through life. Suddenly, much of our stored knowledge is lost to us because we can't start up the technology to access this shit. You can't turn on your DVD players to put your DVD in to possibly listen to some lecture you might have stored there you probably run out of batteries to run on whatever recorded lectures you may have on your Walkmans or your DVD players or your MP3 players or even hell the mini displayers that I got in the house. All that shit would be gone like that and we lose tons of information that allowed our societies to function. 
that stuff would be lost within a couple of generations and then suddenly you're going to have legends of the old wizards from before who used to have this vast great technology or somehow techno wizardry or maybe straight up magic because no one knows how this shit works anymore <laughs> so it could happen I, I can't help but I know that really has nothing to do with your question but well I think it has something to do with it I'm just imagining a world where you know depending on how we fuck things up how it would lose so much but th this has gone on far too long so hope you know you liked my answers and sorry this took so long thanks for answering mine and catch you and everyone else later.